Good morning, good morning. Uh, welcome to the first uh, English class from this second term. Uh, this second phase, which by the way, uh, is gonna be so different from the others because we're gonna have this uh, blended learning process. Some of you are gonna join us face-to-face -face in the classrooms in here. Uh, you're coming back, well, some of you are coming back next week. And then the rest of you will remain at home with your online lessons, with your online classes, and you will try to take advantage of your time. But um, I'm just telling you, I'm kind of excited and, and I don't know what to expect from this process because we have never, never ever faced a situation like this before. You see, we, we have blended blended classes. Some of you are gonna be at home, some of you are gonna be here. It's gonna be a total mess, but we will try to figure it out and try to do the best of us. And also I hope that you have enjoyed your, your vacation period. By the way, it has been very long. I, I can hardly remember the last time that we have classes. It, it's, been, it's been so long, almost a month, almost a month. I don't know if you want to share, uh, how are you feeling these days? What are your expectations for this second phase, this second period, this second term that we're gonna, well, that we already started since yesterday. Anybody who wants to say something or comments about your vacations? No? You're, you're still shy. So you, you, don't, you don't want to share anything on the microphone. No? Lizzie Carolina, are you online? Lizzie Carolina? Yes. Uh, do you want to tell me how are you feeling? What are your expectations for this new process that we have already started? Or tell me something about how was your vacation? Um, well, um... Are you coming? Are you coming back? Are you coming attending classes face to face? I don't know what I'm thinking about. Uh, that you, you don't know if you're coming back. I mean, remember that we are uh, getting back to the classrooms. Are you coming or are you staying? You're staying home or you're coming to school? Ah, it's, it's cool. Oh, you're going, oh, excellent. Uh, that's a good news that you're going to be here at school. Thank you very much. Um, Valeria Barrera, Valeria Alejandra Barrera, are you online? Yes, teacher. Hello. Do you want to tell me something about your vacation, about what are your plans for this uh, come to school, come back to school? Um, actually, I don't know if I am going to school. <laughs> ah, really? You're still thinking, thinking about it? Yes, I, I, <laughs> I'm still thinking. All right. Okay, take your time. Take your time so you can make the best decision for you and your family. Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, let me see anybody else who is here. Uh, any volunteer? No volunteers. Andrea Saray Coral. Andrea Saray, are you online? Yeah. Hello, teacher. Hello, how are you? Um, nice. 
<laughs> nice. Okay. Are you coming back to the school or you are staying home? Yes, I'm coming back. Excellent. Are, are you happy with that decision of yours or do you still have your doubts? Um, I'm happy. Okay. Thank you. Hazel Parada. Hazel Michel Parada. Hi, teacher. Hello, Hazel. Hi. Have you enjoyed your vacation? Yes, I enjoy my vacations a lot. Okay, good to hear that. Are you coming back or you're staying home? I'm coming back, teacher. Ah, that's great. It's good yes. to hear that. It's good to hear. Okay, Axel Kevin Diaz. Are you with us? Axel Diaz. Not here. And the last one, the last person I'm going to ask is Wilmer, Wilmer Rivera. Wilmer Antonio, are you online, Wilmer? Probably he's not. Evelyn Joanna. Evelyn Joanna Romero. Good morning, teacher. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, did you enjoy your vacation? Um, no. Why not? Because, um, how do you say? <laughs> ah, everything was, or oh, everywhere was crowded, full of people. Yes. Oh, so you didn't go out. Mm -hmm. mm, are you coming back to school or you're staying home? I'm at home. Ah, you're staying home. Okay, that's a good decision of yes. yours. Okay. Thank you guys for sharing your, your impressions about this uh, uh, school coming back. Um, some of your families have decided not to send you back. And um, everything that you decide is the best. Whatever you decide is the best for you because you know exactly what your situations are, right? And the implications to get back to the classroom uh, brings to you. So I, I, I congratulate you for your decision, uh, whatever this one it is. Um, I hope that, that you get the best of the education process. We will try to do the best for the ones who stay at home and for the ones who are here in the classroom with us. Uh, that's for sure, we're gonna try to do our best. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna start talking about the assignments. Uh, we're gonna have only two homework assignments, 35% each, uh, like we did in, in the previous term. Uh, one is gonna be individual, it's gonna be a quiz, and the other one is gonna be in groups because we continue with the project. So in the first phase of this project, you presented the problem, a situation that you consider that affects the environment in your community. Uh, well, some of you uh, start talking about things so general, but remember that the problem must be occurring in your neighborhood or in your surroundings, like I said. So the solutions will be proper for the problem that you are facing uh, firsthand. And then um, we're gonna start using the spotlight on literature. We're gonna work in that book um, approximately two or three weeks. I'm gonna let you know when we're gonna switch the books and then we're gonna start using the English ID to be. Yeah, it's to be, I guess. Yeah, it's to be. Okay, without no further ado, uh, let's move to the first thing, the explanation of the assignments.
So like I said here, we got only two uh, segments. I will explain this one later on. Okay, the first activity, my friends, is gonna be taken in two weeks. Uh, when you have your homework planner, you will see um, the date because it varies depending on the room. For example, I have assigned this uh, homework or this quiz uh, for room A, uh, May 19th. Uh, for room C, May, no, it's not in May, it's in April. April 21st, April 20th, April 19th. It will depend on your room, but you will have it in your homework planner. So don't, don't worry about that. So what is the quiz about? The quiz is gonna be about reading. So you have to access, well, so far, so far, nobody has reported any problems, any technical problems with the Richmond platform. So far, nobody has uh, said anything negative about it. I mean, that you can't access, that you don't have a user. Maybe because you haven't tried to enter, maybe that's the reason why. But just in case, let's pretend that everyone, everyone here has access to Santillana Richmond Learning Platform. So there you're gonna find uh, an assigned reading quiz. It's a reading quiz. So it means that you don't need to study for that because the text will be there. They are located in the platform. You will read them, you will read the questions and you will try to respond the best you can. And that's gonna be it. It's not long. I think that there are three, three readings only with two or three questions. Uh, yeah, three questions I think is the top. And they are easy questions to respond so you won't have any problem to get a perfect score. You won't have. Uh, teacher, what will happen? I don't know if by that time uh, you will be here in classes. I don't know, I don't really know. I, I have to check the calendar, but so far I don't know. What happens with the students who are here in the school and the ones who are at home? All of you are gonna have 24 hours to uh, respond that quiz. And if in that, within that time you can solve it, you can take it, I will reschedule it. So if you can't for different reasons, because the internet, because the electricity, because you are here in the school and you don't have access to internet in here, uh, don't worry, because you're gonna have 24 hours, a 24 hour period to go over that quiz. Uh, and that quiz is gonna take you 10 minutes, tops, 10 minutes or 15 minutes, depending how fast uh, you are when you read. Um, do you have any questions about it? Any questions, any questions? You can ask right now, because then I start receiving WhatsApps asking me questions that you were supposed to ask before. Teacher, what is the exam? Teacher, what is the quiz? Teacher, what time will we have the quiz? I will repeat, you have to access to Santiana Richmond Learning Platform. And you will have a reading quiz assigned and, and you will have a 24 hour period to take it. If you have any problems, you have to report it immediately. So I can reschedule it. And so you, all of you will have the opportunity to complete it. Questions, questions? My friends, do you have any questions? Everything is okay. Okay, thank you very much. Glad to hear that. So this is the first assignment. Uh, you have to keep in mind that it's gonna be taken in two weeks, in two weeks. Uh, 19, 20th, April 20th, April 21st. So that's gonna be the date. And then, um, 
for the uh, the project, the second part of the project, this is the second deliverable, 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 uh -huh. deliverable. Uy, tongue twister, second deliverable, deliverable. Uh -huh. There you go. So uh, anybody wants to help me reading the instructions, please? Because you are too quiet and I don't like you to be so quiet. Anyone can help me out, please, with instructions? Anybody? Me, teacher. Please. Instructions. For the next English Fest, we will work on going green to protect the environment so that we can live in a better place. To do this, you have to follow the next steps. Thank you so much. Okay, the first one is work in the same groups of the first term. So you have your groups, so you know who you're working with. It's not complicated, it's just by the number of your list. The only thing that changes sometimes is according to the number, according to the number of the students in each class. Sometimes it's different from A to B, from C to D, but most of it, we, we are working in the same page. Um, the second, uh, anybody please, please, please help me with the second point. A boy, a girl, anybody who is alive? Uh, teacher, I can Please. Uh, propose possibly solution to the environmental issues you present the first deliver. Thank you very much. So remember that the, in the first deliver, deliverable, I have problems pronouncing that word, deliverable, 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 uh -huh. that thing, uh, you presented a problem. Some of you presented solutions and you were not supposed to, but it doesn't matter. So you, you're working in advance. So uh, you have to present some possible solutions to that problem. Uh, I'm gonna tell you how many, because uh, there are a lot of possible solutions and then you can uh, spend the whole day talking about it, but I just want just a few things. I don't want you to mention 10, 20, 22, 23, uh, solutions for that problem because we have different ways to say the same with different words. Number three. Goodbye, teacher. Please. The actions will, must be stated clearly. The minimum of solutions you propose must be five and maximum of eight. Remember, you must be able to put them in practice one day. Thank you so much. So uh, this is the the requirement, the minimum and the maximum. A minimum of solutions you gotta propose are five. Five solutions for that problem and the top is eight. No more than eight, no less than five. And remember that you must be able to put them into practice one day. So don't bring me solutions that require um, a huge budget, for example. How can you afford a huge project to protect the environment. So which you're gonna need machinery, you're gonna need uh, the cooperation of enterprises, companies, well, well that, that, that is affordable, but it's very difficult for you to do it. So there must be practical things, practical things that can be done with your own resources or with the help of your parents. And they must be, no more than five, no more than eight, no less than five. Uh, and then here we go. Uh, this is my proposal. Uh, should a video, I, I recommend the, the easiest way, the easiest path, which is a PowerPoint exported as a video. That is an easy way to do it, but, but there are uh, other platforms, Photon, and other whose names I, I, I can recall at this moment, but there are a lot of sites on the internet where you can't uh, make videos. So the thing is that you have to create a video with a solution. Every slide, every slide of your video or every slide of your presentation must have a specific requires. 
So, and, and I will read them for you. You will present a PowerPoint exported as video or a video from another platform. So that is up to you. This is my proposal because it's the easiest with all the requirements on due time and uploaded in Google Drive. So you're gonna send me a link of, of your video. Um, you have to upload your video on Google Drive or in YouTube or whatever and send me the link so I can check it. Uh, in point number five, it is important that you don't show your faces because uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not legal that someone uh, uploads video of minors without uh, parents' permissions. And we're not going to ask for your parents' permission because you are too many. So don't show your faces on your clip, only your voices, because it is important so I can check your pronunciation, fluency, and all of that. But your faces will remain in anonymity. Um, you can show uh, different pictures, motion pictures. So you're very creative. You're, you're more creative than, than me. You're more creative than me. So you can think of something, of something much better and you're gonna surprise me. The only thing that I need is that you don't show your uh, pretty faces. Um, number six, anybody help me please with number six. Me, teacher. Please. Follow that slide format for your video. Thank you so much. So uh, here I have attached a format for your video. So everything, everything uh, is not that, oh, no, teacher. Uh, at first, I'm going to write this information, then second that other information. No, I, I will present you the order of all of the information you're gonna present. And number seven, um, I want to congratulate you, my friends. Uh, you did an excellent job because you follow this uh, instruction and it's a very important instruction. Uh, in the subject of the email, you included your classroom, the number of your team, and especially the name of the activity. And, and you did it so well. Uh, I, because I received tons and tons of emails. And for me, it's easier to check uh, when you have titled the subject correctly and you did it very well. So congratulations, I give you that. You follow my instructions, so keep it, keeping on doing it, keeping on that. In the subject of the email, uh, your room, uh, the number of your team, and of course, the activity's name. So, and this is the format um, for, for the presentation. In the slide number one, or in the scenes number one, depending on the platform you work on, but I think they are called the slides as well. In the first slide, the information you may include is the updated school logo. Remember that the school has changed its logo and you have to uh, use the correct one. The logo of the institution, the name of the project, a picture that represents your topic, can be some trees, can be a beautiful landscape, water, so whatever that you think that represents your topic. The subject, the subject is English, of course. Subject English, uh, level, you are in level 10th. The room depends on where you are enrolled and the names of the member of the team. Okay, so everybody must work in the teams because I receive a lot of complaints of people who did not work, did not cooperate with your classmates. Remember, remember that everything, everything, everything is evaluated in different ways. And what is in, into the game in here is your learning. If you don't get involved in, in the assignments, uh, you will not uh, learn as well as the other classmates. 
And this is important because this is why you're here. You are here to learn, not to pass. Okay, in the slide number one, do you have any questions about the slide number one, my friends? Anybody wants to confirm if everything is crystal clear? It's clear, teacher. Thank you very much. So uh, in the second slide, anybody wants to help me please reading the information you may include in the second slide? Help. Me teacher. Okay. Uh, provide a short description of the environmental problem you have chosen. Thank you so much. So in the second slide, uh, you're going to give me a brief description. So it's basically to summarize, to summarize what you did in the first deliver deliverable. Okay. With all of the information you included in the first deliverable is going to be summarized in the second slide. The problem. What does the problem is about? Not what does the problem uh, affect in the um, environment? Then in a slide number three, a slide number three, uh, anybody help me please? What information are you gonna incorporate here? Maybe it's your shirt. Okay, uh, please. I help you. Please. Negative consequence of that issues. Why it's important to do something to stop or lessen the situation. Thank you very much. So you had to write a list of negative consequences of the problem. They are obvious, of course, they are so obvious, but you had to mention them. And why it is important to do something to stop or lessen the situation. Sometimes the situation can disappear at once because it's just impossible, but at least you can reduce, you can help to lessen the problem. And you have to tell me why it is important to do so. And the slides number four and number five, you're gonna include the possible solutions to this environmental issue. And that would be it. So in some groups, in some groups, I have five or six members. Remember that all of you, all of you must uh, work here. Your voices must be heard in the video. Uh, well, sometimes it's complicated to know who's talking because we have never been in a classroom. I don't know many of your faces because we have never been in a classroom before, like I said. And so I, I, I leave this to your conscience. I leave this to the will that you have in order to learn. And it's a difficult thing to do because you are teenagers and sometimes you like to get some shortcuts. Well, people in life, people generally in life likes to take shortcuts, but sometimes they don't take you Oh, a helicopter is flying here. So uh, sometimes shortcuts don't take you to the best port. Okay, um, questions, my friends? Any, any, any particular thing that you want to ask? No? Did I make myself clear? Yes, teacher, it's clear. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So if you have no questions about the assignments, we're going to move to the first topic. The first topic, remember, uh, I try. I try to start with the reading passage in the spotlight uh, uh, because I consider that this is an excellent book to work with because by reading, you can learn many things. You can learn vocabulary, you can learn grammar, you can learn uh, especially how to communicate in context because the stories, the books, and also the author's lives provide us um, a lot of context. context. And the context is um, everything 
that helps you to understand a language much better. Uh, so let's let's start with it. Let me share with you my presentation for this class. There we go. If you have your books, uh, please, please, please get them and open them to page 34. Open your books on page 34. It's the beginning of unit number two. We're going to start unit number two in your spotlight on literature theory. A Sound of Thunder is the story. This is a story I really like. I personally like this story. So first and foremost, in order to understand uh, a story, it is important to have a, an insight of the author, of the person behind that story, the person with those ideas that helped to create uh, this book or this story. This is not a book, this is not a novel, this is a short story. Um, so this guy is Ray, Ray Bradbury. And this is some information, some important information that you can find in the book. And also uh, this information has picked up from the internet. So I hope that is a, a currency. I, I think that the website where I get this information from is accurate, is legit. So uh, anybody who wants to help me out with the first paragraph, please, please. Um, Make it sure. Uh, who is me? Sorry, I couldn't see your name. Uh, Dariela. Okay, Dariela. Dariela. Okay, ah, oh, Dariela, hello. <laughs> Hi, nice teacher. To hear, nice to hear your voice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Ray, me, please. Ray, uh -huh. Brad, Ray Bradbury was an American fantasy and horror author who rejected being categorized as a science fiction author, claiming that his work was based on the Fantastical and unreal. Thank you so much. So this man, this man didn't like to be categorized as a science fiction author. And why is that? It's because he said that he was convinced, he was so convinced himself that everything, everything that he thought about or he wrote about was based on fantastical and unreal. So nothing to do with science fiction because you know oh, what a science fiction story's requirements are. They have to talk about the future. They have to talk about spaceships, uh, robots, technology that probably don't exist in our days. But this man has everything, everything to be, to be categorized into that, um, that genre but he didn't like it. He refused to be considered like that. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, whatever. Second paragraph. Anybody wants to help me please with the second paragraph? A boy maybe. A boy. Are there any boys here in the class? Or are you asleep? Oh, you are asleep. So a girl then. Me teacher. Jaremia. Yes. Thank you, please. Uh, it's nice to hear your voice again. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. And his best known novel is Fahrenheit 451. Bradbury won the Pulitzer in 2007 and is one of the most celebrated authors of the 21st century. Thank you so much. Okay, so this man won a prize, uh, the Pulitzer. 
Uh, um, I'm not so sure who gives this award to writers, but I think I think because it rings my bell, that is an important prize. It is important. It's not like the Nobel Prize on literature, but the Pulitzer is important. And he won it in 2007 for uh, his masterpiece, because this is considered uh, his masterpiece, Fahrenheit. And there's also a movie that it doesn't have anything to do with the book. I mean, it's based on that, but in the story plot, um, it got a lot of differences. So, well, I haven't read the book, I gotta confess. Uh, and I haven't watched the movie, but those are the comments that I have heard around. So thank you so much. Uh, so let's move to the second part of his life. This is kind of longer. So I need another volunteer to help me, please. Maybe Jessica Valeria Avelar. Are you online? Good morning, Jessica? teacher. <laughs> Good morning. It's really nice to hear you again. Long time not hear you. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, are you coming back, my dear, or you're staying home? No, I'm staying home. You're staying uh, home. It's because I don't have like somebody to take me to the school. So. Ah, okay. Don't worry. This is the one of the smartest things to do. Okay, please. And Bradbury died and died in Los Angeles on June 5th, 2012, at the age of 91. He was survived by his by daughters Susan, Ramona, Bettina, and Alexandra, as well as several grandchildren. As inspiration to writers, teachers, and science fiction enthusiasts, among countless others, among countless countless others. Bradbury's fascinating, work, fascinating works will be remembered for decades to come. Thank you so much. So you see, many people who are attracted to science, to science fiction are fans of Ray Bradbury's work. And he doesn't like to be considered a science fiction writer. Uh, I, I have never read anything about it, but just this story we're gonna, we're gonna read in a, in a few minutes. Uh, but I think this guy has everything to go for. Like I said, he mentioned time travels, a technology that don't exist nowadays, spaceships, and all of these elements that uh, make uh, science fiction possible and so catchy, entertaining, and so. We have the characters of, of the story. Uh, so this is important for you to know. Um, we're going to give some descriptions of the characteristics later on. Right now, I'm just going to mention the main character. The main character is Eccles. Eccles is the protagonist in this story. There's uh, this person is important in the story. Uh, they don't mention his name. I mean, his reference is the man behind the desk. You, you will hear uh, of this guy and the reference for him is the man behind the desk. Then we have Travis. Travis is a safari leader. He's a hunter. He's a hunter. Um, and he's the, the ones who leads the group. The group is made by Les Perrins. Les Perrins is Travis' assistant. And we have also two more hunters. Billings and Kramer. So um, you can uh, get the, the, the names right there. You will find it later in the story. Settings. When did the story happen? Well, the story takes place in the future. In, uh, well, that is so far from here. It's more than 30 years from now is the year 2055 AD. So in the AD, AD is in Latin. It means Anno Domini, Anno Domini. And I, I looked it up on internet, what is the meaning of Anno Domini? And it's uh, after Christ. 
uh, some time in the in the time after Christ. So this is Anno Domini. El año. Uh, does anybody here knows Latin? So who can translate el año Anno Domini? No? Nobody knows? Knows Latin because I forgot it. But the thing is, it is in 2055 after Christ. And also, there's another setting here. And it is, can you read that number? Anybody? Who wants to read this number? Voluntarily. 60 million, 2055. Excellent. 60 million, 2055 years before the time they left. So we're going to have uh, two different settings. One is in the future, and the other one is so back in the past. And where? We have two places. Uh, at the Time Safari Company, at the beginning, the action will take place in an office, in a company's office. And the name of the company is the Time Safari. They are safaris through time. It's a place where you can hunt animals from different eras throughout the time. And also they're gonna visit a prehistoric, a prehistoric jungle. Aquí es, eh, well, here is letter R. I, I got a typing mistake. Letter R, prehistoric jungle. Uh, any questions so far? I have presented you the characters, the characters' names, and also the place and the time where the story is going to take place. So uh, this is a summary, but um, we're going to work on this summary after we read the story. Okay, and we're gonna read it like we did last time. And while you read, I'm gonna play the audio. I'm gonna play the audio of the story. Uh, but I think we don't have time. We have, oh no, yeah, we have 15 minutes to go. So we're gonna listen to the story. Just give me a sec. Okay, let me know if you can listen. The sign on the wall seemed to quaver under a film of sliding warm water. Can you listen? Eccles felt. Yes? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So we're going to listen from the beginning. A Sound of Thunder by Ray Bradbury. The sign on the wall seemed to quaver under a film of sliding warm water. Eccles felt his eyelids blink over his stare, and the sign burned in this momentary darkness. Time Safari Incorporated. Safaris to any year in the past. You name the animal, we take you there, you shoot it. 
Warm phlegm gathered in Eccles' throat. He swallowed and pushed it down. The muscles around his mouth formed a smile as he put his hand slowly out upon the air, and in that hand waved a check for ten thousand dollars to the man behind the desk. Does this safari guarantee I come back alive? We guarantee nothing, said the official, except the dinosaurs. He turned. This is Mr. Travis, your safari guide in the past. He'll tell you what and where to shoot. If he says no shooting, no shooting. If you disobey instructions, there's a stiff penalty of another $10,000, plus possible government action on your return. Eccles glanced across the vast office at a mass and tangle, a snaking and humming of wires and steel boxes, at an aurora that flickered now orange, now silver, now blue. There was a sound like a gigantic bonfire burning all of time, all the years and all the parchment calendars, all the hours piled high and set aflame. Unbelievable, Eccles breathed, the light of the machine on his thin face. A real time machine. He shook his head. Makes you think. If the election had gone badly yesterday, I might be here now running away from the results. Thank God Keith won. He'll make a fine president of the United States. Yes, said the man behind the desk. We're lucky. If Deutscher had gotten in, we'd have the worst kind of dictatorship. There's an anti-everything man for you. A militarist. Anti-Christ, anti-human, anti-intellectual. People called us up, you know, joking, but not joking. Said if Deutscher became president, they wanted to go live in 1492. Of course, it's not our business to conduct escapes, but to form safaris. Anyway, Keith's president now. All you got to worry about is... Shooting my dinosaur. Eccles finished it for him. A Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Tyrant Lizard, the most incredible monster in history. Sign this release. Anything happens to you, we're not responsible. Those dinosaurs are hungry. Eccles flushed angrily. Trying to scare me. They moved silently across the room taking their guns with them toward the machine, toward the silver metal and the roaring light. First a day, and then a night, and then a day, and then a night. Then it was day, night, day, night, a week, a month, a year, a decade. A.D. 2055, A.D. 2019, 1999, 1957, gone. The machine roared. Eccles swayed on the padded seat, his face pale, his jaw stiff. He felt the trembling in his arms, and he looked down and found his hands tight on the new rifle. There were four other men in the machine, Travis, the safari leader, his assistant, L'Esperance, and two other hunters, Billings and Kramer. They sat looking at each other, and the years blazed around them. The machine howled. Time was a film run backward. Suns fled, and ten million moons fled after them. The sun stopped in the sky. The fog that had enveloped the machine blew away, and they were in an old time, a very old time indeed, three hunters and two safari heads with their blue metal guns across their knees. Travis indicated a metal path that struck off into green wilderness, over streaming swamp, among giant ferns and palms. And that, he said, is the path laid by Time Safari for your use. It floats six inches above the earth doesn't touch so much as one grass blade, flower, or tree. It's an anti-gravity metal. Its purpose is to keep you from touching this world of the past in any way. Stay on the path. Don't go off it. I repeat, don't go off. For any reason. If you fall off, there's a penalty. And don't shoot any animal we don't okay. Why? asked Eccles. They sat in the ancient wilderness. Far birds' cries blew on a wind, and the smell of tar, and an old salt sea, moist grasses, and flowers the color of blood. We don't want to change the future. We don't belong here in the past. The government doesn't like us here. We have to pay big graft to keep our franchise. A time machine is finicky business. Not knowing it, we might kill an important animal. A small bird, a roach, a flower even, thus destroying an important link in a growing species. That's not clear, said Eccles. All right, Travis continued. Say we accidentally kill one mouse here. That means all the future families of this one particular mouse are destroyed, right? Right. 
and all the families of the families of the families of that one mouse. With a stamp of your foot you annihilate the first one, then a dozen, then a thousand, a million, a billion possible mice. So they're dead, said Eccles. So what? So what? Travis snorted quietly. Well, what about the foxes that'll need those mice to survive? For want of ten mice, a fox dies. For want of ten foxes, a lion starves. For want of a lion, all manner of insects, vultures, infinite billions of life forms are thrown into chaos and destruction. Eventually, it all boils down to this. Fifty-nine million years later, a caveman, one of a dozen on the entire world, goes hunting wild boar or saber-toothed tiger for food. But you, friend, have stepped on all the tigers in that region by stepping on one single mouse. Step on a mouse, and you leave your print like a grand canyon across eternity. Queen Elizabeth might never be born. Washington might not cross the Delaware. There might never be a United States at all. So be careful. Stay on the path. Never step off. I see, said Eccles. Then it wouldn't pay for us even to touch the grass? Correct. Crushing certain plants could add up infinitesimally. A little error here would multiply in sixty million years, all out of proportion. Of course, maybe our theory is wrong. Maybe time can't be changed by us. Or maybe it can be changed only in little subtle ways. Who knows? Who really can say he knows? Okay, we're going to stop here. Um, it's almost time for your break. Um, so uh, I'll see you next class. Thank you very much. My recommendation for you is that you read just story by your own. We're going to finish while listening next class. And also we're going to discuss about certain things. But um, I suggest you to read it. Thank you, guys. Uh, enjoy your day. Thanks, teacher. Thanks, Thanks teacher. 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 You're welcome. Thanks, teacher. Bye. Bye. Bye, teacher. Bye. Bye-bye.